Hey everyone, I'm Dave Otero, and today we're talking about one-shot drum samples. How to use them to add weight and punch to your drum performance, but without completely annihilating your dynamics and ruining your drum mix. Let's get into it. Okay, so what are one-shot drum samples? They're sample sets you can pick up that only give you one, usually hard hit sample per drum. So that's one solid kick, one solid snare. If there's toms, that's one of each tom. You don't have a fully dynamic set that's going to track with your velocities. It's just the same sample used for every hit, hard hit, soft hit. Lately, one-shot samples have been really popular for producers and mixers and for good reason. Uh, they have a few things going for them. Typically, they're more affordable than fully dynamic sets, so you can get a couple of sounds for a lot less than you might pay otherwise. Often, they're mix-ready, meaning they're polished sounds ready to go straight to a mix bus. Sometimes they even have reverb and things like that mixed in, so that allows you to get to a finish point faster or have a really nice starting point. And they're just dead simple to use. It's just a single wave file per layer, you can even copy and paste them in your DAW. Lots of DAWs have built-in samplers. You can just load up that one file, uh, pretty easy. So while there are a lot of benefits to one-shot sample sets, there are also a few things you need to watch out for for using them in your mix. Since they're not fully dynamic sample sets, it can be pretty easy just to completely crush your whole mix and every sample is like right in your face, there's no variety, can sound extremely robotic and not human at all. So today I wanna walk you through a few sessions of mine and show you how I might use one shots in a mix uh, and ways to get those benefits of that extra punch and solid tone without an overly robotic sound. Before we dig in, I do want to mention that all the samples I'm using today, I've created myself, and they're actually available to purchase as of today. I teamed up with the awesome dudes at Drumforge for my own drum shots pack, and in that pack you get three kicks, four snares, two sets of toms, I think that's six toms total. Also, additional layers that we're going to get into here as far as rooms and verbs and a cool thing i call the smack enhancer that adds a little extra snap and punch to any of these samples this is the first time i've released a product like this out to the public so i definitely didn't cut any corners i'm not just rushing this out there i took my time made sure all the samples were completely face coherent so you can stack and layer them and really they're the cream of the crop these are some of my sickest drum sounds that i went in and just poached the best sounding hits for this pack and now you guys can use them in your own mixes we're also doing a giveaway with this video, so three of you lucky people out there will get my sample pack for free. Make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment below. And about a week after this video is up, I'll go through and pick out three at random, get in touch and send you the samples. No cost, no strings attached. I'll put a link to that down below. Head to that page, check out some demos I made and pick up your set today. All right, now with my shameless self-promotion out of the way, let's jump into the DAW and get to work. Okay, in this first example, I've pulled up a mix of a rad band called Tetrarch that I did an album with a few years ago. In this mix, we're not using any natural kick drum and we'll be replacing that 100% with samples, but we do have a pretty solid sounding natural snare and we're gonna be blending in a one shot with that snare drum to kind of get us that consistency, but still utilizing some of the dynamic nature of the snare mic. So let's listen to what we have to start off here. Okay, so, uh, pretty finished mix but obviously there's no kick drum and that snare sound while it's cool it's kind of a little tubby sounding doesn't have a lot of snap definitely needs a little more length to it you know they're pretty tight gates on that snare to control bleeds so we don't get a lot of length that's one thing that you can kind of get from a sample set that's more difficult to achieve uh, with mics so okay let's start with our kick sound i'll solo the drums we can bring up our kick fader and then dig into what samples i chose and how i'm blending them
So here we have the kick samples, and you can see I've stacked a few on top of one another. Let's play these, and I'll alter the ratios of those, and you can see what sounds are possible with this one kick alone. Okay, that sounds pretty good. It could probably use a bit of EQ, but we'll get to that in a bit. Let's move on to snare and see what we have here. Okay, so you can see we're still getting a lot of weight from the actual mics, but that snare is giving us some length and a lot of that snap and crack. One important thing I do wanna mention is that anytime you're gonna blend samples or a mic and samples, you wanna make sure they're lined up phase-wise. I use auto line for this purpose. So you can see I've set uh, uh, my master as the mic, and then I have the sample set over here. Uh, slaved to the same channel and you let it play for a bit uh, it listens to both of them and then adjusts uh, the slave track forward or backwards in time to make sure they're in phase anytime you're using samples you can get a lot of benefit from doing this it doesn't always make a huge difference but it can absolutely make a huge difference and i always do that so i recommend you do the same you can also print your tracks and line them up uh, visually um, but take some sort of steps to make sure that your mics and samples are in phase. Uh, so let's pull up the samples on snare and see what we got. On this particular sample, I also have a huge verb layer that's not really going to be used in music like this or anything this tempo, but if you have some really slow, heavy doom stuff, this thing sounds awesome. I'll let you hear it just a bit. Absolutely cavernous, not really for this kind of a sound, so we'll leave that pulled down for now. But I like the balance of this uh, mixed version with a little bit of the smack enhancer to give it some extra crack and a bit of room to kind of blend it in. So since we're using uh, snare mics and samples, let's go ahead and find our blend between those two, at least an initial blend. I'm gonna use my little control surface here for that. I'll start from the top. All right, that sounds pretty good. So let's bring in the rest of the instruments and the kick definitely needs a bit of work. It's a little plasticky sounding right now by itself. Um, that may be reduced when we bring in guitars and bass. So let's unmute everything and make some adjustments with the full mix in place.
Okay, the snare is sounding right where it needs to be. This kick could use a little bit of EQ work. Um, and even though these are essentially mixed sounds, doesn't mean you have to leave them that way. Obviously, everything should be adjusted to the instruments that are surrounding it in a mix. And this one uh, has a little bit too much of that upper mid clack. So we're going to jump into my favorite play and uh, pull a little, bit, a little bit of that down. Yeah, I think that sounds pretty awesome. This type of music, more full-on rock with without tons of dynamics or subtleties to the drum performance, is really where you can get a lot of benefit out of one shots and get to that point pretty quick. The troubles arise when you're dealing with stuff that has ghost notes and more subtle parts and a more dynamic drum performance. And guaranteed, while these few riffs might not have those elements, somewhere on the album is gonna be that stuff. And using one shots, you can start with a riff like this and get it sounding slamming and then all of a sudden you get to a more dynamic section and you're kind of stuck with this non-dynamic performance so let's jump to another project that has some more of those subtleties and we'll talk about how to use drum shots in a way that won't completely annihilate your dynamic performance okay i've pulled open another session from a band called cult of lilith uh, that's a rad band from iceland i actually just finished mixing this album this week um, I'm pretty confident you guys will be hearing about them soon because they're really good. So uh, this particular mix has natural kick as well as already some kick samples blended in, some dynamic samples, um, natural snare and snare samples. So we're just really looking for a little extra push, a little extra weight and consistency with the drum shots. I'll also cover some ways to get yourself out of trouble if you run into a situation where there's some dynamic drum performance and the drum shots are just ruining that. Uh, there are a few tricks that you can use to still utilize those one shots even on dynamic drum performances. Let's take a listen to what it sounds like first with just the existing mics and samples, no drum shots. Okay, now I'll bring in the kick and snare drum shots so you can see what they're adding to the music, and then we'll tackle some issues that arise. All right, that sounded good. I hear some issues with the kick sound. Let's first see what samples we pulled up here. So we're using the sleigh kick and a bit of the smack enhancer on this as well. Let's solo drums and zero in on what these are doing.
okay, here's some areas where the low end is kind of fighting with the other existing sounds, low mids, I guess. It sounds a little wooly. Um, it definitely adds some good push, some punch that's going to make it pop through the speakers, especially on faster sections and smaller stereos, like some cars and stuff like that. But there's some low mid stuff um, that's making it sound a little clouded. So let's dig in and see if we can sculpt some of that out. That sounds better. Cleared up some of that wooliness down here. Um, that left us with a bit of like a papery sound on the attack uh, in those upper mids that we took care of. And just a hair of snap we added on the top uh, to help it bite through the rest of the instruments. Let's take a look at our snare samples now. Yeah, that sounds good. The more you're using these one shots for just enhancement, the more you can use the Smack Enhancer track. It's pretty extreme by itself, but if you already have um, you know, mics and other samples that, that are part of your sound, you can just really use this for that effect, for that extreme Smack effect. Uh, so it's even a little higher than the dry sound at this point, and you could just use only that, and you're only getting that bitey sound. Uh, but these sound pretty good, actually. I don't really hear too many issues. They, they're blending with the mics and my other samples perfectly. Again, like I mentioned before on the Tetrarch material, I have auto-lined all these. So whatever method you use to correct phase, I highly suggest you do that between mics and samples because it can make a huge difference. Okay, let's skip ahead to the next riff where there's some more dynamic snare playing. And I'll show you one of the troubles you may run into when using one shots on this kind of material. Let's listen. Okay, so he's doing some kind of stick drag, upbeat snare stuff. Uh, it's nice and tasteful, but right now it sounds like absolute garbage. Those one shots are just completely ruining the feel. They're annihilating the dynamics of that snare performance. Let's go over a few ways you can still get the benefits of a one shot, but avoid that issue. My first go-to method for controlling this issue is running my samples off of MIDI. You can see that I have a MIDI track that contains all of my drum information. So I have my snare track here. If we look at these velocities, we've got hard hits and obviously these little stick drag ghost notes are down lower velocities. The reason why it sounds like trash right now is because I have my trigger set up uh, in a way that a lot of people probably do if they're triggering directly off of the auto, not using MIDI. And that's with this dynamic tracking down. So I have it down to 30%. I know a lot of guys, especially for rock stuff that turn it all the way off or turn it to 20%. And essentially what that is doing is squishing down the velocity layers that it's pulling from the audio. So it's only, it's, it's raising up all of the quiet hits of a snare performance and only triggering loud samples. Like that's great if it's just a rock thing, there's no dynamic playing. That's one of the things that you look to get out of samples a lot is controlling that, those velocities. But in a situation like this, if you simply have MIDI running uh, your samples, enables you to turn this all the way up. I'm generally at either 100% every once in a while, I'll, I'll squeeze down to 80 or 90 if I just want to control it a bit more. But um, obviously 100% dynamic tracking gives you the most control and it makes the loud hits loud and the soft hits soft. So it's still going to be triggering a hard one shot sample for these soft hits, but it's going to be so quiet that it's going to blend in the music a lot better and not be as obtrusive. So. Let's listen to what it sounds like only making that one change.
Okay, so that sounds a lot better, and typically that'll be good enough. Uh, but there could be a situation that arises if you have uh, an even more dynamic section. Maybe there's drums over acoustic guitar, and you've already used a one-shot to play a large part in your snare sound, for instance. Um, and even though those ghost notes are triggering quiet one-shots, you can still just hear that snap. It sounds artificial. It doesn't sound dynamic. Uh, the second way of tackling this problem would be this. It still requires you to run your samples off of MIDI, but on my MIDI track, I'm sending the information from the drum track uh, to slate trigger using a MIDI send. What that enables you to do is add this modifier in between. That's the wrong one. Modifier in between. Uh, and essentially only send notes of a particular MIDI velocity range. So we're going to go down to range, velocity filter, turn max up to 127 and minimum up to, let's say, 40. If we look at our drum track over here, uh, our MIDI drum track, you can see that all of these ghost notes are right around 20 to 25. If I hover it over here, it'll show me the velocity right there. So over here, where the hard hits are uh, obviously near 127. So if we only have it send MIDI notes between 40 and 127, we're only going to get these hard hits. And that's only um, sending to the one-shot sample. The other samples that are more dynamic are getting the full set. So let's see what that sounds like. So obviously much better. Now the one shots are only being triggered for the hardest hits and still leaves the other sources to control the more dynamic ghost notes. Okay, now we're going to tackle the absolute worst case scenario. Um, say you are new at recording and mixing and you really want to write cool ghost note parts like periphery, but you only have one sample pack and you can only afford a pack of drum shots because they're cheaper. Um, this is a way where you can kind of hack that one shot to give you a dynamic sound that doesn't sound papery and flat, uh, all out of one single snare sample. I've already kind of done some heavy lifting here, but I'll walk you through the process. So using our same tools that we use to gate out some of those softer hits from the one shots, we've left that the same way to our main set We've actually opened another instance of trigger or another sample, whatever you're using to trigger your one shots and uh, set it up the opposite. So one sample set is only receiving the hard hits and one sample set is only receiving the soft hits. And to further complicate the situation, I've pulled out all of the mics and all of the other dynamic sample sets. So our only snare sound right now is a one shot. And we're gonna do what we can to get a nice, vibey, ghost notey, dynamic jump performance out of this single set. Uh, now we have our hard hits and soft hits separated. Let's see what that sounds like if we just play it as is. Okay, so not great, not yet. Uh, but now that we have separate tracks for these, it gives us the ability to control those softer hits separately. So let's see what we can do. I've got a few things on here and I'll, I'll slowly enable them and so you can kind of get an idea of what they're doing. The first is an awesome plugin called Spiff. It's a transient designer of a sort, um, but it's a little more detailed and faster than um, some of the others. It's great at taming kind of poppy sounds from snare drums or kick drums. It's great at uh, pulling out string noise on a bass performance or some sibilant stuff you can use as a de -esser. That's a really interesting tool. You, and you can actually cut or boost these uh, transient you know, frequency ranges. In this case, obviously we're gonna use it to cut some of the high end or the mids and the high end and reduce that kind of upper transient response. So I'll, I'll play it and then enable this and you can hear what it's doing. It 
So that does a lot already. Um, that's really doing most of the work here. The second thing I have is an EQ where we're rolling off some of the very top end and pulling out a little bit of the kind of weighty mids here to give it a little more of an airy sound. So let's hear that. Yeah, that sounds good. The last thing we have is just a traditional SPL transient designer pulling more attack out and adding a bit of sustain to kind of fake the wire sound that is more prevalent for softer snare hits. Let's see what this sounds like. Now it's a pretty usable sound going from this which is just garbage um, to something that sounds actually pretty dynamic. There's some other work involved as well. Uh, like I, I pulled the smack enhancer out of these softer hits completely because um, that's really defeating the purpose of trying to control these in a different manner. I also went in and I tweaked the dynamic tracking and played with the output level and tried to balance it um, volume-wise in a way that sounds natural. So it's not always gonna immediately um, translate to a perfect sounding combination of hard hits and soft hits. It takes a little bit of work, but if we open up the rest of the mix with only a single one-shot sample on snare, um, we actually have something pretty dynamic going on. So there you go, a few tips on how to utilize one-shot samples in your mixes. I hope you guys took something from this video, uh, even if it's just a little tidbit here and there that you can use in your own productions. If you thought these samples sounded cool, which I mean they obviously do, follow that link below and check them out. They're available for purchase right now. Drumforge also offers a, a wide variety of drum shots from other mixers and other producers. Some of my favorites would be the Billy Decker sets and also Grant and Carson's set. Those are really killer as well. But buy mine first, then you, after that you can you know, buy whoever's. As always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Got more stuff planned soon. I hope you learned something from this one. So take this information and turn your drums from mush to crush. Mush to crush. I just came up with that right now. Adlib, mush to crush. Mush to crush.